So today we are going to discuss the uh, neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate. Neuromuscular junction is the point at which, at which the nerve fiber contact with the muscle fiber or the point at which the signal from the neuron that is coming from the brain or the spinal cord that get transferred to the muscle or a sim or a simple thought process is converted into an action so this is going to be a very simple very uh, easy and very very important point uh, topic both from physiology pharmacology and as well as from clinical medicine point of view along with that it is also important from exam point of view as well yeah. so normally the signals uh, the signals the nerve signals they come through the nerve fibers they basically originate in the um, brain they nor comes through the spinal cord and from the spinal cord through the different neurons reach the skeletal muscle so in a way when you think that for example I want to drink water or I want to go to the gym that's a thought process that thought process that gets gets transferred through the neurons to your muscle and then you go to the water cooler drink water or go to the gym and, and do some exercises how this thought process or how this action potential how this signal get converted into action that basically is at the level of neuromuscular junction we have previously discussed the action potential and the properties of the membrane that how it uh, conducts uh, uh, current or uh, electric potential now what will happen and how it will happen that this uh, signal gets uh, transferred to the muscle when the neuron has entered the muscle this neuron gets branched into a um, small fiber it is branched so that each and every muscle fiber the muscle as a whole is made of small fibers which we have already discussed a simple muscle fiber is a con uh, as a structural and functional unit of the whole muscle so every fiber muscle fiber mostly gets uh, mostly gets activated or uh, gets innervated by one nerve fiber the point at which the neuron gets attached to the muscle fiber that point that point is known as the neuromuscular junction or the motor end plate this point has been enlarged in this diagram if we see the point at which nerve has entered the muscle fiber at that point the muscle the, the membrane of the muscle fiber has gone inward it has gone inward like this it has gone inward this this space which has been uh, created by this inward uh, movement or the uh, a space or movement of the muscle uh, or the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber that space that uh, that area is known as the synaptic gutter so the muscle fiber at the point of junction of the neuron at the point of junction of the neuron this membrane has gone inward and has created a small area known as the synaptic gutter and the distance between the sin the membrane of the muscle membrane of the muscle uh, fiber and the membrane of the neuron this distance this distance or this distance is known as the synaptic space so at the point of the junction the point where the neuron is meeting the muscle fiber the mem the the membrane of the muscle cell has gone inward and has created a space or a gutter known as synaptic gutter and the space between the there is a small space that exists between the membrane of the muscle fiber and the membrane of the nerve fiber that space is known as the synaptic space this 
muscle uh, this muscle membrane or the membrane of the muscle fiber in this synaptic gutter it has gone again inward it has again gone inward to increase the space and when it goes again inward it is known as the subneural cleft so here we have three types of areas or spaces initially the the whole initially the whole muscle fiber has gone inward the whole muscle fiber has gone inward that is known as the this is the this is the gutter then the muscle the neuron has come inward and the space has been created that is known as the synaptic space and then this muscle has gone again and again and again inward and these spaces are known as the subneural clefts what happens in an action potential that when a signals arise uh, come or an action potential reach this place arising from the brain through the spinal cord to a nerve fiber reaching the neuromuscular junction there is secretion of a chemical known as the acetylcholine or acetylcholine this chemical or acetylcholine normally it is present in small packets known as vesicles and they are normally present in the terminal fiber at the end of the uh, the nerve fiber they are present at this region which has been this space has been enlarged here so this contains a lot of acetylcholine chemical known as acetylcholine is present in a lot of vesicles it is normally present here this acetylcholine was manufactured somewhere here in the cell and it has reached all along the axon and has reached these end point and is ready for action when normally this acetylcholine will present in vessel in vesicles and will not come out but when a signal in action potential reaches here action potential is nothing but a sudden or rapid change in the potential of a neuron so when any stimulus for example a pin prick or a heat or a touch or any change in temperature or whatever which we have thoroughly discussed in last few lectures it excites the membrane then there is a change of potential and that potential reaches here when that potential reaches here at this space now this area has been enlarged here initially the whole neuromuscular junction has been enlarged here and out of this neuromuscular junction a small space has been enlarged over here at this level we have some calcium channels these red uh, dots or these uh, red lines they are showing the calcium channels above the calcium channels there is a dark bars and these dark bars are present here along the at the end of the uh, nerve fibers when the signal has reached these calcium channels get opened and a lot of calcium which is present here in this synaptic space they get entered the calcium get entered into the nerve fibers at the uh, in the ending of the nerve fibers when the calcium get enters into the nerve fibers calcium gets attached to these vesicles calcium gets attached to these vesicles which contain acetylcholine this is this calcium along with the vesicle it comes to the end or if we see here we have actually enlarged this area here so if we discuss here this vesicle they will reach here and they will open here and they will secrete acetylcholine the chemical which was present inside them so it will secrete its acetylcholine so you see action potential came it activated the calcium channels calcium entered and calcium uh, pulled the acetylcholine vesicles and they attached the acetylcholine vesicles and they opened the vesicles opened and acetylcholine was secreted outside through a process known as exocytosis when acetylcholine has been secreted outside 
they come out and they bind the muscle fiber normally each and every fiber gets one nerve fiber normally every fiber has just one neuromuscular junction and mostly it is in the middle of the neuromuscular junction so as soon as the acetylcholine has been secreted from the vesicles this acetylcholine comes and it acts on the muscle fiber so this is the membrane of that muscle fiber just below these calcium channels or these dark line or dark bars there are acetylcholine receptors the acetylcholine receptors get activated and as soon as they get activated they get opened so these are basically these are the acetylcholine receptors initially before the binding of acetylcholine they were closed but when acetylcholine bind to them they get opened when they get opened at this area of the receptor it just above the the receptor there is a negative charge there is negative charge so it will allow only positive ions like sodium and potassium and a lot of sodium a lot of sodium will enter due to the dynamics or due to the properties of this receptor you can call it like an acetylcholine gated potassium sodium channel as soon as a lot of sodium enters into the fiber a lot of sodium has entered into these tiny fibers a lot of sodium has entered into these tiny fibers so when sodium has entered the fibers the potential of that membrane the, the potential of the membrane rises normally the potential of the muscle fiber is around minus 80 to minus 90 when sodium has entered which is positive ion it increases the potential and it takes it away from minus 80 to minus 70 minus 60 minus 50 minus 40 may take it to plus 60 or plus 70 when sufficient sodium has entered or sufficient potential has arrived to secrete a lot of acetylcholine and a lot of sodium enters it may cause an action potential and the muscle may contract or movement may start but if a lot of signal has not reached here or the signal is not that much strong then few acetylcholine will be secreted few sodiums will enter and the muscle membrane the the, the potential of the muscle membrane uh, muscle fiber the membrane of the muscle fiber it will just fluctuate between minus 80 to minus 70 but it will not cause an action potential the the membrane of the muscle fiber is as excitable as the membrane of a neuron and the potential of the membrane of the muscle fiber is as much as that of a large myelinated neuron these are the topics which we have discussed in detail in the last lectures but it's still important to discuss that there are two types of excitable tissues in the human body one were the neurons and the other are muscles so both can uh, transfer the signals or the current but the thing is that the signal gets transferred transmitted through the neurons very quickly the velocity is very high but the velocity of transmission along the muscle fiber is a bit slow and the second thing is that the the once the action potential has occurred it will last very for a very small amount it will just go up and down in the nerve fiber it will go very quickly but on the muscle it will be a bit slower and it will last for slight more time or a long uh, a long time as compared to the action potential of the uh, nerve fiber so this is the whole process of the excitation of the um, muscle before going into detail of its clinical importance or its importance in uh, pharmacology i will just summarize it again signals come from the human brain through the spinal cord through the nerve fibers into the muscle at the muscle the neuron uh, gets branched into muscle uh, different fibers and each fiber supply 
वन मसल वन मसल फाइबर वन नर फाइबर ऑलमोस्ट सप्लाई इन अर वेट्स जस्ट वन मसल फाइबर एट दैट पॉइंट इट इज नोन एट एट द पॉइंट एट विच इट इन अर वेट्स द मसल फाइबर इज दैट पॉइंट इज नोन एज द न्यूरो मस्कुलर जंक्शन और मोटर एंड प्लेट एट द मोटर एंड प्लेट देर इज आर देर इज स्पेस क्रिएटेड और द मसल द मिम्ब्रेन ऑफ द मसल फाइबर हैज गोन इन वर्ड दैट इज नोन एज दिस नेप्टिक गटर एंड स्पेस इज क्रिएटेड बिटवीन द मिम्ब्रेन ऑफ द नर फाइबर एंड द मिम्ब्रेन ऑफ द मसल फाइबर दैट स्पेस इज नोन एज दिनेप्टिक स्पेस the the muscle fiber membrane has gone again and again inward invaginated again inward to create to increase the space and that is known as the subneural space which we have shown here which we have shown here inside the terminals of the nerve fibers there are a lot of vesicles which contain acetylcholine and they have calcium channel when an action potential has reached this area calcium enters into the nerve fibers and that calcium uh, brings the acetylcholine vesicles the acetylcholine gets secreted into the space synaptic space and it acts on the acetylcholine gated sodium channels once the sodium channels has been activated it in, it opens and allow a lot of sodium to enter and that sodium increase the potential or increase the electric voltage of the membrane fiber from minus 80 to uh above to the minus 70 minus 60 and to till plus 40 or plus 50 or plus 60 and that's basically the action potential of the muscle membrane now what are the few problems or the clinical uh, relevance of this neuromuscular junction or motor and plate when the signal has reached this point and an action potential has occurred this action potential is known as end plate potential end plate potential it it is the motor end plate so the potential generated here is the end plate potential when the acetylcholine has been secreted here this acetylcholine needs to be destroyed as soon as possible because if stays here for a long time it will keep on exciting the sodium channels and a lot of sodium will be coming in and the muscle will be activated again and again so an enzyme known as acetylcholine esterase acetylcholine esterase it is present there and it destroys it destroys or inactivates the acetylcholine and it cuts it into two parts so the action of the acetylcholine gets finished now there are some types of drugs which blocks this enzyme the acetylcholine esterase enzyme one of uh, them is the neostigmine neostigmine blocks this acetylcholine and it allows a lot of acetylcholine to be accumulated and acts for a long time neostigmine is a drug which is known Where are available in the markets, and it is used in the treatment of a disease known as myasthenia gravis. What is basically myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis is a condition in which there are antibodies formed against these sodium acetylcholine gated sodium channels. Antibodies have acted on these channels so that acetylcholine is unable to act on these receptors. so any person suffering from myasthenia gravis he will not be able to perform his daily activities he will not even be able to uh, uh, open his eyes properly he will have dropping eyelids and this problem will increase at the end of the day in the morning that person normally have few symptoms but is the time increases at the end of the day the symptoms of the patient increases so that disease is known as the myasthenia gravis and the treatment of myasthenia gravis is neostigmine neostigmine blocks this acetylcholine esterase enzyme so it allows a lot of acetylcholine more than normal acetylcholine to be secreted here and to be accumulated here so that it can compensate for the actions of those antibodies which are destroying the sodium channels so the patient gets some benefit some of the patient may still be having some symptoms but 
they may get benefits from these drugs there are other uh, categories of the drugs which are relevant to the neostigmine but that is one example another thing is that there are a few drugs like like uh, diisopropyl fluorophosphate diisopropyl fluorophosphate diisopropyl fluorophosphate i will summarize it like this this the new the action of the neostigmine will last for a few hours and then the action of the neostigmine will go on will be gone and the patient of myasthenia gravis will be having a lot of uh, will the symptoms of their passion will come again but this drug diisopropyl fluorophosphate is a difficult name it can completely block this acetylcholine esterase enzyme and when it is completely blocked the patient can even die it can even cause the death of the patient that's why this is also known as the nerve gas and has been used in wars to kill the enemy another important topic uh, that is relevant with this topic um, is that there are few drugs like nicotine which is normally present in the um, cigarettes or uh, the some other drugs so nicotine is the capacity to excite this acetylcholine receptor and that will also allow the sodium uh, to enter and the problem is that once they bind here the acetylcholine cannot destroy them so it will increase the excitability of the skeletal muscles and the muscle will be like in a spasm like of like in a spasm so there will be continuous uh, contraction of the skeletal muscles so these are the few clinical correlations of the neuromuscular junctions one is the myasthenia gravis that's due to the antibodies against the acetylcholine receptors then another is neostigmine which is basically the um, which is basically the treatment of myasthenia gravis because neostigmine blocks the acetylcholine esterase enzyme then there is uh, DIFP diisopropyl fluorophosphate this is an abbreviation which i have created that may not be a standard abbreviation so diisopropyl fluorophosphate is a nerve agent along with that there is another very important poisoning known as the organophosphate poisoning organo organophosphate poisoning in this type of poisoning the same action um, there are some chemicals which blocks the acetylcholine esterase and the same sequence of actions the acetylcholine gets activated this organophosphate they are normally present in the insecticides or pesticides used by the farmers so organophosphate poisoning is a bit common in developing countries and this they present some they present with the sign symptoms of this DIFP poisoning and uh, some of the patients can be treated and some of them die but the treatment is mostly to block the blood the action of the acetylcholine because uh, you sometimes the acetylcholine can be recovered with another drug like pralidoxime but sometimes it has been completely destroyed and the patient has developed so much symptoms that or that they cannot be recovered so these are the clinical correlations of the neuromuscular junctions so to recap it signals from the brain to the spinal cord to the fibers come to the muscle fibers at the muscle fibers the muscle membrane has gone inward creating a synaptic gutter, gutter. The space is created between the nerve fiber and the muscle fiber known as synaptic space and the space has gone inward to create the subneural cleft inside the neuron at the end of the neuron there are vesicles of acetylcholine and there at, at the end of the nerve fiber there are calcium channels when action action potential arrives at the end of the neuromuscular junction calcium enters calcium binds to the vesicle calcium and it brings the acetylcholine to be secreted here acetylcholine when secreted here it binds to the acetylcholine uh, 
uh, acetylcholine uh, receptors or the sodium uh, the acetylcholine gated sodium uh, receptors and it allows a lot of sodium to come in and when sodium comes in the potential there is an electrical activity known as the action potential or the end plate potential is generated which leads to the contraction of the muscle or any movement of the muscle when acetylcholine has been secreted it has it is normally destroyed by the acetylcholine stress acetylcholine stress can be blocked by the neostigmine which is used in the treatment of myasthenia gravis acetylcholine can also be blocked by the organophosphate poisons and it can also be blocked by the nerve agent so that's all about the neuromuscular junction hope you have understood this topic if there is any query you can ask in the comments thanks a lot for watching